On Wednesday night, U.S. time, Ron DeSantis officially launched his bid for the U.S. presidency. And in doing so, he ended months of speculation as to whether he would actually run or wait, as a number of people thought he might, for 2028. Oh, but there was one other thing about this announcement. He didn't do it at a campaign rally or with a video like Joe Biden. No. He officially launched his campaign in a Twitter space, which is sort of like an online meeting area. And it was hosted by Elon Musk. Yeah, Governor, there's been a lot of speculation over the last couple of months about your, your plans. Um, I understand that you may have an announcement to make. Uh, we've got, I think, a, a record audience assembled here. Uh, you know, the, probably the biggest uh, room that's probably ever been assembled online. I, what, what would you like to tell them? Well, I am running for president of the United States to lead our great American comeback. Can you just feel the excitement there? I'm sorry, Governor. 1996 called. They want their Polycom conference room speakerphone systems back. The whole thing was bedeviled by technical problems as hundreds of thousands of people tried to tune in to listen. And in fact, he did get there in the end. But naturally, this was also huge fodder for the Trump team who started the hashtag disaster trending. Now, the analysis from CNN, about more which in a moment, summed up much of the media reaction. They said, DeSantis is under pressure to bounce back after an embarrassing campaign launch. And MSNBC couldn't resist snarking. You remember that time that billionaire Elon Musk unveiled the new Tesla Cybertruck? And when he went to demonstrate the vehicle's supposedly bulletproof glass, they smashed two of its windows, even though they weren't supposed to break? Today's Twitter rollout of the Ron DeSantis campaign went kind of like that. Now, let's be frank. This was not the best start to his campaign. But to be honest, I also think a lot of the criticism of DeSantis' launch is unfair. Remember, plenty of those who are talking it down have an interest in seeing DeSantis fail. And he did get more than 700,000 people trying to listen in, which is a huge number. So. Even if it didn't go to plan, DeSantis' launch was a disruptive move, one that signals a new era of political campaigning that bypasses so-called legacy media to connect directly with voters. And frankly, that's not a bad thing. That's progress. That's democracy. Though for the high priest at CNN and the New York Times, this will eventually be as revolutionary as Gutenberg's printing press putting the word of God directly in the hands of the people was. But, if I may be so bold, I think DeSantis has another problem, a bigger problem, and that is connecting with voters beyond his own base. Because yes, the tech was revolutionary, if clunky. TV used to be too. But hopping into a Twitter space with Elon Musk is not the sort of move that connects with ordinary voters who have a very different set of concerns than big tech billionaires even big tech billionaires who annoy the left because they refuse to censor stuff. Likewise, DeSantis talks a lot about his war on woke, and it is viscerally satisfying to see him take on Disney and teachers unions and lockdown enthusiasts and everyone else who wants to get their hands on your kids to fill their hands with a bunch of Marxist nonsense and trans ideology and a hatred of themselves and their country. If Ron DeSantis is going to win back Trump voters, he has to have more. While of course he has a lot of time to fight back, in a national average of polls, Trump is beating him 54 to 21 percent for the Republican nomination. If he's going to make that up, Ron DeSantis is going to have to stop fighting on his home turf and start fighting on Trump's. Remember, Trump has a pretty simple platform. Stop the woke nonsense, re-empower re the American worker, protect the borders, and de-escalate global conflict. Let's have a look, for example, at how the two men recently handled questions about Ukraine. First, Donald Trump. Would you give Ukraine weapons and funding if you were elected? I would sit down. Let, let me just put it a nicer way. Uh, if I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day, 24 hours. It'll be over. It'll be absolutely over. Do you over. want Ukraine to win this war? 
Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people and breaking down this, this country. Now, Ron DeSantis. How would you address the ongoing war in Eastern Europe between Russia and Ukraine on day one of a Ron DeSantis presidency? Well, first, I think what we need to do as a veteran is recognize that our, our military uh, has become politicized. Uh, you talk about gender ideology, you talk about things like global warming that they're somehow concerned, and that's not the military that I served in. Now, to be fair, DeSantis did get to an answer eventually. In terms of what's going on over in Eastern Europe, um, you know, I'd like to see a, a settlement of this. I do not want to see a wider war. I think it's completely unknowable what it will look like in January of 2025. Uh, but I would not want to see the United States with our troops uh, get enmeshed uh, in a war in Russia or in Ukraine. Now, this isn't about Ukraine, and you may think Zelensky is a hero for the ages, or you may think that it is insane for the West to keep escalating conflict with a country that has an arsenal of five or 6,000 nuclear weapons. That's up to you. But what this is about is which candidate connects more. First with Trump voters who need to be won over to win the primary, and then with all the Americans who need to be won over to vote so he can win the White House. And Ron DeSantis is going to need more than just a war on woke, as important as that is, to accomplish it.